Hello everyone, my name is Amanda and welcome back to another video of The Plenty Mandy. Alright, so today we're going to talk about one of the more mysterious <laughs> and um, confusing topics when it's come to growing Hoyas, which is Hoya Blooms. So now I say it's a little bit more confusing and complicated and mysterious is <laughs> because there seems to be a lot of different information out there about how to bloom your Hoyas, right? And sometimes even if you do all the stuff that everyone told you, like it seems like it still just doesn't happen. So I think it will be an interesting thing uh, for us to talk about it today. So now before we get into um, the actual discussion, I want to put our very important disclaimer. So I am in no way, shape or form an expert um, in booming Hoyas. So um, in the past few years that I've been collecting and growing Hoyas, I would say I have bloomed maybe a few dozens of them. So it's not a lot of them at all. Um, and it's, you know, there's a couple reasons for that. Like number one is, is I just grow Hoyas mainly their foliage. Um, you know, if you haven't checked out my Hoyas foliage favorite series, you should look at it. I'll link it somewhere on the screen. Um, so yeah, so I grow Hoyas mainly for their leaves. And if they flower for me, like I always consider that as like, oh, it's a nice bonus, you know? However, don't get me wrong, I love the Hoyas flowers. Like they are just this most gorgeous, amazing looking thing that you will ever see in the plant world, in my opinion. So if you have bloomed your Hoyas before, or if you have just looked up pictures on the internet, you see this Hoyas flower, they have this really um, symmetrical uh, shape, and then they look so perfect that it's look almost fake. It's like someone make it out of like porcelain or clay or something and like carefully paint on it. So those those flowers are just so cute that, you know, it's it just a great thing to look at. And secondly, it also smells really good, some of them. So I have this Hoya Vertex Zilata that I bloomed uh, once before. And um, I remember, you know, when, it's, when I noticed the bloom, it was like daytime. So I try to smell it. I smell a little bit, but it's not too strong. However, when the evening came, um, I walk out of my bedroom into my living room where the vertex latter is. Oh my goodness, I was still like 10, 15 feet away from the plant and I can smell like this mixture of gardenia and jasmine it's just so wonderful and heavenly so those are you know a couple reasons that you know that you may want to try to bloom your hoyas because it just looks so beautiful and then it smells so beautiful however to me the most important reason for me to like just try to bloom a hoyas experience in blooming a hoyas because it's a great accomplishment right so when you're able to like Bloom a Hoyas is mean that your Hoyas is very happy in its environment. So I know there's this like um, you know saying that um, um, you know the Hoya bloom when it's dressed out. I think it's true to, true to an extent, and yes, it's it's correct. You know when a plant is um, you know stressed out, it may want to like oh shoot, you know I have to reproduce as soon as possible, otherwise I'm gonna die, right? My genes won't survive. However, most of the time still. Um, Hoyas bloom when they have a, a favorable environmental conditions, right? Think about it, just like human, right? Like you have to be full and have a shelter. Hi, Fiona. Yeah, she, she has been not leaving me alone. So here is Fiona. Hi, Fiona. So yeah, um, you know, as just as human being, right? You have to be like full, you have shelter before you think about reproducing. So same as the plants, right? They have to like, you know, uh, have an established wood system and, uh, you know, be able to like uh, produce food with enough foliage before they, uh, they think about like exerting extra energy to bloom and flowers and reproduce. So, you know, that's why when you are, um, you know, successfully bloom your Hoya, it means that your Hoya is very happy with the environment it provided and it's just the greatest feeling, right? So remember when you see the first new growth of your Hoyas, right? That sense of accomplishment when you're able to bloom it, it's like 2.0. So that's why it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, even though I grow Hoya mainly for the foliage, I still, uh, you know, try to like or experience to bloom my Hoyas. 
So why in particular today I want to film this video is because recently I have been having multiple hoyas that either start to go on new peduncle or start to develop buds or you know start to bloom. So I think it will be a great opportunity for me to um, you know show you the different progression from like okay what does it look like before it's bloom, what does it look like when it's developing buds, and what does it actually look like when it's bloom. So let's get started. So first thing first, let's talk about morphology of a peduncle. So you heard of this term all the time, right? When you talk about Hoya blooms, like peduncle, 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 peduncle. So what is a peduncle? So a peduncle is essentially, um, you know, where the flower is coming from. It's look like this like stalk that's come out from the stem. And then, um, you know, that's where like the Hoya is going to develop the buds and eventually bloom. So I have this Hoya, um, CV crystal here, so it's a Canosa cultivar. I really, really like this plant because of its, like, you know, inky green leaves and all the splash on it. So I want to show you. Let me find the. Yep, right here. So you can see this is a peduncle. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to get it focused better. So as I mentioned earlier, so you see this like stalky thing, right? This like long stalk right here. It's what we call peduncle. Right, so it's come out from the stem, and then you see the the really tippy end. You see this like you know, like kind of like a cluster thing. Oops, sorry, not focusing. Oh, there we go. Like at the very tip, we call it a spur. So the spur is actually where the buds gonna develop and flowers. So the longer the spur, it means that the uh the plants actually have flower like uh multiple times. So the flowers gonna keep or the buds gonna keep coming out from the same spur, um, but what's gonna happen is like it's just gonna get longer and longer when the plants are uh, you know flower um, many times. So that's basically how a peduncles work. So again, like this long hold, this long stalk, it's called a peduncle, and then you see the tip, right? All the side this clust cluster, <laughs> cluster, cluster thingy. <laughs> It's called a spur where the buds come from. All right, so since you can see like it's this one look kind of dry, right? It's look kind of dry. So uh, we call it an inactive peduncle. So meaning that it's not currently producing buds or like, you know, actively growing. So that's why it's called an inactive peduncle. However, do not cut it off because like I mentioned earlier, uh, when the environment is favorable, um, the plant's gonna develop, uh, you know, buds and it will eventually, uh, eventually bloom. Okay, next I'm gonna show you um, what an active peduncle looks like. So it's meaning that the peduncle, uh, it's actually actively producing uh, buds and growing. So let's look at this one first. So this is my one of my favorite plants, like not the not particular the species itself, but just this plant in general because it grows so well. And this is my Hoya caudata Sumatra, because I know there's different forms. So I would so I don't know if you can see really well. Hmm, let me see, it's right here. Hmm. So yeah, there we go. So you see this like, you can kind of see this like web thing right here. So this is the peduncle, right? And then you can see like the tippy top, right? The tippy tip of the, um, you know, little cluster thing, that's a spur. And this guy, you see the little redness over there. It's very hard to see, I'm sorry, because it's so small. But like those are, uh, it's actually stuck to uh, butt, right? Stuck to butt up. So now, this guy has just flowered for me like maybe a, a little bit more than a month ago. I'll, I'll put a, a pictures uh, somewhere on the screen so you can see. And then I was pleasantly surprised that when I see that it start to bud up again. So yeah, it's tell me that, you know, a, a Hoyas can actually bloom multiple times a year, right? So this is one of them. So we call it an active peduncle because, you know, it's actually, um, it's actually like currently actively budding up and growing. So another active peduncle I want to show you is on my Hoya Lockei. So this one you probably can see a little bit better. So this is the Hoya Lockei peduncle. 
and you can see like at the woody tip it start to bud so yeah so this is what an active peduncle look like so you can see that um yeah so this is again the peduncle and then the top we call the spur which is where the bud's coming from you can see there's no spur on this one at all it's because this is the first time it's ever bloomed so the story of this plant is again this is one of my favorite i know they are all one of my favorites but for real this one is one of my favorite again not because of the species itself but it's because of the uh the plant you know itself so a few months ago i forgot like four or five months ago i experienced a major fungal infection in my greenhouse so because it's inside the greenhouse so all the plants are really close together and um, a lot of them get infected and then I would say I lost probably closer to a quarter of my collection um, there and it was just this very upsetting event so the Hoya Lockei was one of the victims and um, it <laughs> It got so bad that like the, the infection gets so bad that I actually have to defoliate. I have to take off all the leaves except for one. So you can see this bottom leaves here was the last leaf <laughs> that was left on the Hoyas after the um after the, the, the crazy infection incident, right? So yeah, I, I I took all the leaves off except for one. I um you know treated, isolated, and you know eventually it's actually grow back all these new leaves for me. So yeah, so all these new leaves are uh, actually uh, come back after the infection. And it's, it also developed a peduncle for me and start to bud up. So I'm really happy with this plant. But yeah, but you know, this is how um, an active peduncle look like. So the last two plants I show you, you know, was just the, um, I hope you can see it because I know it's very small because it's just start to bud up. Um, so yeah, so those are the example of like how, you know, when they first start to like, you know, um, develop. So the next one I want to show you, it's basically just a progression of that. So this is my Hoya Pachyclater. So this is not the first time this plant actually bud or bloom for me. It's actually bloomed for me before. Again, I'm going to put a picture somewhere um, so you can see that. So you can see like I have this set of buds right here. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not. There you go, I have this set of buds here. So you can see this is like, you know, this is the peduncle, like you can see. And then like, you know, and then you can also, let me, yeah, there you go. You can also see the spur because it had flower before. I don't want to break anything, hold on. <laughs> so you can see this is a spur right here. And then ta-da, so these are the buds. So you can see this is like, the bud is much bigger than the previous two I showed because it has been like developing. So this is basically how it's developed. And as time go by, it will develop even more. And ta-da. So you can see this one, it's like, you know, getting there, like it start to like get into the shape of a bud. Uh, or buds. <laughs> so yeah, so this is uh, basically how uh, a peduncle like start to bud up and then it's going to start to develop. So this is my Hoya Pachycata, a really good um, bloomer in my opinion. And this is one of the um, one of the uh, two Hoyas that I actually left outside, live outside, just because of like how succulent it is. I know it can take a little bit more sunlight and um, yeah, and it has been happy. It has been like, you know, blooming for me and then um, it's bloom again and again and again. So I love these plants. All right, y'all. So <laughs> now that we look at um, how an in inactive peduncle look like and then how it slowly, you know, become active and bud up and the buds start to, um, you know, to form and to grow. And it's time for the finale, which is higher blooms. So I want to show you this one, which is actually in bloom right now. And this is my Hoya Multiflora. So this Hoya Multiflora is also known as Shooting Star Hoya, and you can see why uh, it, is, it has that name. So you can see it looks like a Shooting Star. I know this is not probably not a really good like, focus, but yeah, so that's basically what a Hoya flower looks. So let's talk about Hoya flowers um a little bit right here so as you can see like 
there's two main parts of a Hoya morphology, like Hoya flower morphology. So the middle part, right, we call it a corona, which is like like a crown, right, corona. And then the outside, like the, the petals, right, uh, we call a corolla. So yeah, we have the uh, flowers corona and then we have the uh, flower corolla. So yeah, so this is basically what it's look like. And if I get really close, I don't know if you can see it. Hoya flowers also would produce sap. So I can see some right here in person. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. But then the Hoya flowers do produce like this sweet sap. So um, you can taste it. it, it's sweet. Like I, I like tasting it. Um, I don't know if it's safe, but you know, I, so far I survived. So <laughs> I think it's, it's probably not poisonous. But yeah, but um, you know, they, that's um, one of their, um, you know, tactics to like extract obviously pollinator. So that way, you know, the flowers can get pollinated. So yeah, so this is the Hoya Multiflora Blooms that I have. And Hoya Multiflora is actually really easy bloomer, really good bloom, uh, bloom, bloomers. <laughs> and um, yeah, there is actually multiple peduncles, um, you know, on this plant developing. And you can see like this one right here. Right, like I said, it's budding up. So, yeah. So it's it's you know so far this is a woody woody um great pants. I really like it. So if you want to like uh try to bloom hoyas like and you just first started, I would say like hoya multiflora is the one that you probably want to test out. So now that we look at the um the development and the progression of a peduncle and the hoya flowers, let's talk about how to actually get it happen. So like I said, I am not. NOT, I'm not an <laughs> expert of blooming hoyers, but uh, there's a couple factors that I observe um, in the past few years that, that you know, may help, you know, with uh, your hoyer blooms, um, at least in my own environment. So I would love to share those with you. So the first thing is the lighting. So as you know, hoyers like bright, diffuse lights. So I know it's a really abstract thing, like l bright, diffuse lights, but I would say, you know, if you are living in a, a house or apartment, it's, it, you know, the east window will be great, the west window will be great. Um, you know, those are the bright, it feels like it's like bright, <laughs> but it's not like blazing hot sun, right? Because that will be too much for the Hoyas. So yeah, you do lead up, uh, you do lead bright lights in order for the Hoyas to flowers, at least what I noticed. So I grow a lot of my Hoyas under grow light. So when you translate, uh, you know, that like outside, like actual natural sun to bright light, um, I do leave my bright lights. I do, I do leave my grow lights on for at least, um, I would say like 10, 10 to 12 hours a day. Um, I do use a full spectrum grow light and I think that works really well, uh, you know, for the Hoyas. So that's the number one thing I noticed is like it does like, um, bright diffuse light in order to uh, for the Hoyas uh, to develop flowers. And the second thing I would say is um, the maturity of the plant also plays a role. So bear in mind that a plant is small, the size and the maturity of the plant is not always positively correlated. So it means that even if a plant is smaller, it doesn't mean that it's not mature because you could be taking a cutting from a woody mature plant, you take it from a mature branch, and then you wood that up and that's still considered mature. And then, you know, once the roots are, you know, uh, fully established and your plant is acclimated to an environment, you know, that mature, like, tiny plants, tiny Hoyas could bloom. So, you know, that would be another thing that you want to think about. Um, because, you know, if your plants are really young, like I grow Hoyas from seeds, right? So I don't expect the seedlings to, to bloom anytime soon. Because again, you think about it, the, the plants really want to establish the roots, grow in the foliage, you know, to secure the food supply uh, before they actually uh, you know, think about reproduction. So that would be uh, that would be the other thing that you want to think about. So the third thing, very interestingly, I learned this actually from Doug Chamberlain from Vermont Hoyas. So if you guys are serious about you know blooming all your Hoyas, 
you have to check out Doug. So I, I don't know if any of you have ever heard of him. If you have ever heard of Doug Chamberlain, you probably are new to Hoyers. But yeah, go to Hoy uh, VermontHoyers.com and he also have a uh, YouTube channel that he will tell you like, he will share with you really generously and humbly on you know his experience of growing and 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 blooming hoyas um and recently um if you listen to podcasts on bloom and grow radio um Ducks actually did an episode with Maria, which is the host uh, on Hoyer's Claire. And then he did mention a couple of things about uh, how to bloom your Hoyer. So you should check it out. I will leave uh, the, the link of that podcast somewhere in the video you know, so you guys can listen to it. Great episode. Uh, I screamed like a little girl when I <laughs> when I saw that, you know, Doug is doing an episode. Uh, so that was great. Um, however, like the one thing that I learned from Doug is... Um, some of the Hoyas, depending on the species and, and um, you know, where it's come from originally, actually bloom responding to the change in day length as well as uh, temperatures. So one example he gave was the Hoya Calasina. So the Hoya Calasina is this fussy leaves Hoya that it's absolutely one of my faves. So this is my Hoya Calasina and um, you can see that the leaves are fussy. And you can see this one actually just start to grow a peduncle for me and start to like bud up a little bit. So yeah, so this is the first time uh, this Hoya actually has ever uh, grow a peduncle for me. And when I listen to uh, Doug's, um, you know, show and also, you know, look at his website, one thing he mentioned about Hoya Calasina is it does respond to the change in day length so meaning that you know summer we have more daytime and you know winter we have you know shorter day length right so he mentioned that the Hoya Calasina like this plant actually uh, would flower when the day becomes shorter so I know it seems to be a high size right now but this guy literally developed a peduncle when you know fall and winter is approaching so I think this will be a good testament of like oh wow you know Maybe the day length really uh, uh, make a difference for this particular species. But again, you know, this is the first time, so I would have to, you know, test it out a couple more times, you know, just to confirm my, my you know, my suspicion, right? And the other thing uh, he mentioned too is the temperature. So some of the Hoyas actually, um, you know, come from higher altitude. So like the Hoya polydura, for example. Um, and uh, what it means is the plants where it's come from experience like a higher temperature at the daytime and a much lower temperature in the evening. And those Hoya actually bloom responding to the change in temperature. So that would be an other interesting thing that, you know, we can experience more. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my Hoya Calasina. Okay. And last but not least, <laughs> this is the most important lesson or most observable uh, variable that, that I, I notice when it comes to blooming Hoyers. If you want Hoyer to bloom, make sure that when it starts to bud up or developing a peduncle, make sure that do not move it. Do not change any of the um, growing environmental factors when it's, it's developing its peduncles or buds. The reason behind this is because when a Hoya actually, you know, developing a peduncles or budding up, it means that, like I said earlier, the environment is favorable. It's like the environment it's in. With that being said, logically, if you change the environment, it may shock the plants and the plant may be like, oh, I don't like this anymore. And that's what happened. Um, that's what, when that's happened, um, you actually is disrupting the development of the buds and you may experience something that is so devastating <laughs> that um, I believe, you know, most of us have experienced, which is bloom bust. So bloom bust is like a slang that, you know, we use in the Hoya community. So it's meaning a premature death of a bud. So you see all the like, buds developing, it's like almost there, almost blooming, and all of a sudden it's all job like it's all yellow and it's sharp it's for it's died it's yeah it is very 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 upsetting um and it's happened to me many times before and i noticed the reason it's happened is because i change the the growing environment somehow so it's either like i move it a little bit 
or like I, you know, wa- I forgot to water it, <laughs> or I changed the humidity, like any things like that would actually disrupt the development of the peduncle or the buds, and it may actually kill your Hoya flowers prematurely. So remember. <laughs> When you see that your hoyas is budding up or like developing a peduncle, don't move it. <laughs> Just leave it there. So this is one thing that I really take it to the heart. All right. So I hope that's helpful. So we talk a little bit about how a hoyas flower develops from like an inactive peduncle and you know start to bud up and you know the buds start to grow bigger and bigger and bloom. Um, we also talk about like you know some of the key factors that. I observe in my own environment that may affect your, um, you know, Hoya's uh, flowers development, and yeah, um, it's it's truly a great feeling <laughs> when you're able to bloom a Hoya's. So I feel like it's a it's 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 fun for us to experiment, and it's not gonna be like a strict lie. It's not gonna be like I try it once and I succeed. Um, it's more like a trial and error thing. Like I experienced this many times before. I thought, you know, <laughs> I thought it's gonna bloom, but then it just dropped all the blood buds at the last minute. And but that's how you learn, right? Just like how you grow plants, like you 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 experience stuff, and then you try different things, and then you fail, and then you know what not to do, <laughs> and then you do better next time. So yeah, so I hope this is helpful. I hope it's give you a little bit of insight. And again, I'm no expert. These are just a couple of things that I noticed that. Um, you know, affects my Hoya blooms. Um, you know, in my own environment. So feel free to share in the comment below, like you know, what your experience is when you are uh, trying to bloom your Hoyas, and if you have any question at all, I would love to hear them. And as always, if you like this video, make sure you click like, and if you want more future video, make sure you click subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.